street climbing. I've got 12 years of experience and I'm going to give you guys some advice on some tree climbing equipment for the beginner. Uh, just the starting kit and here it is. I just want to explain a few things set up around me. I got some base anchors tied here. I got two climbing lines set up and this is just a uh, freestanding access line just in case. So the number one thing you're going to want to have is uh, a climbing harness, a helmet, and along with your harness, you're gonna wanna attach one of these first aid kits. Uh, it's got some, uh, I forget exactly what type of chemical is inside of the bandage, but uh, in case of any mishaps, we've got a little backup. So here it is, it's gonna be essential. Moving along here, um, you're gonna wanna get a helmet that protects your ears, your head, and your face. Um, this helmet for me uh, gets the job done. It's got 360 degree protection. It's the Fanner Proto. It's also got the screen visor and underneath that I have my goggle. Uh, of course there are many other types of eye protection you can buy. Uh, just make sure that you got eye protection and of course a, a face shield. So in addition to the helmet, um, sometimes helmets come with integrated muffs like this helmet does, which also double as side protection. It, it goes with that uh, 360 degree protection and basically the earmuffs are gonna give you safety, extra protection, and they're also gonna give you hearing protection. So you can't go wrong with that. So whether you're buying a cask and you're gonna mount them to the helmet or you're gonna have a integrated earmuffs like this helmet does, it's just, it's worth the extra money, saving your hearing and just in case you, know, you go for a swing, a bad swing and the side of your face gets hit, you know, you kind of got some protection there. So that, that's gonna be something you wanna think about. All right guys, so your harness, uh, you're gonna wanna do a lot of research. You're gonna want to just make sure you're very well informed on how the saddle behaves, where the weight distribution is gonna be, and how it uh, supports your back, uh, most of all, because as production climbers, we're expected to be you know, on the go. Don't be cheap uh, when it comes to the saddle. Uh, I know that we're gonna cut a lot of corners as climbers. Uh, I certainly do, but this is not a place you wanna cut the corners at. In fact, this is where you wanna put a lot of your money. If not in your helmet, then you wanna Put more of it here into the saddle this is the tree motion light it has a lot of adjustments it's got a lot of uh, places where you can make your own custom loops so the customization factor uh, that comes along with it is very nice i really appreciate that also another thing that's going to help you out if you've been climbing already on a different saddle and haven't been using the d-rings here or haven't had the opportunity to use a saddle with d-rings or rigging paws here in the leg loops. You're missing out on a, on a totally different climbing experience. It's more comfortable, it's more versatile. It just increases your endurance, almost equivalent to using your lifeline and sitting into your lifeline. So imagine having this around the tree and just being able to kind of sit in it. You'll be a better climber for that. Anyway, I'm gonna move forward to the lanyard here. So the lanyard, you can basically buy a lanyard in many different forms. This right here can be used as a lanyard. The INI hitch cord with the hitch climber pulley along with you know a carabiner. And also you're gonna need a snap. Uh, some guys use carabiners like this on the end of their, their lanyards. And I don't understand why, because you gotta go through all the motions of the carabiner to open it and in my opinion that's not always uh, the safe route it's a lot quicker to be able to just open it like that uh, just in one motion just by the squeeze of your hand this is a triple locking carabiner so a snap carabiner is going to be the way to go when it comes to uh, lanyards you can buy your own lanyard uh, that's already made and whatnot you can do whatever you want really but they're very expensive and it's so much cheaper to uh, to just buy the snap the hitch climber pulley and the hitch cord or you can buy yourself one of these nice mechanical devices this is a belaying device uh, rock climbers would use it and it's a really nice tool uh, James Kilpatrick the world championship climber has been using this one I've noticed and it's 
his uh, master's climb. He was using this device. I was very surprised. It's my favorite tool and it's his favorite tool. <laughs> so if that means anything to you guys, definitely wanna, you wanna consider that. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do after you got your lanyard, your harness, and your helmet, uh, you're gonna wanna start thinking about how you're gonna be climbing. And for a DDRT system, it's basically gonna be this right here. Uh, hitch climber pulley along with INI hitch cord and uh, just two carabiners. This is gonna, uh, this is set up for SRT right now, excuse that. Uh, but basically, if this was DDRT right now, I would be, I would be locking into it right here. And if you don't have a uh, stitch die or a splice die on your rope, then I would just go for the anchor knot real quick. Um, it's the safest knot uh, for this uh, application. This is very, very safe here. And because it's not a mechanical hitch, you don't have to worry about this pushing down accidentally on your on your hitch and then you know go for a little free fall. Um, so this setup here works good. I've actually used this setup here uh, for many years before I started getting into mechanicals. So anyway, uh, that, that's going to be your basic DDRT setup. Um, like I said earlier, I'm going to post the uh, prices for, for this setup here. Uh, this rope is the uh, Dragonfly. Really nice. It's for SRT climbing. It's a low stretch. Um, this is a really nice rope. It holds, it holds its shape very well within mechanical devices. If that's going to be your, um, your go-to, I don't know how many people are going to be climbing with, uh, with mechanicals as a beginner, but if you're going to be using mechanicals at all, just make sure that you have, uh, a sewn eye or a splice die. Uh, to connect back when you're using DDRT. So yeah, that was the, the DDRT. And now back to the SRT. Um, with the SRT, uh, basically you can use this same exact setup. I mean, you have already spent the money for this. Uh, there's no need to spend any extra money on a mechanical device, especially as a beginner. You want to just learn and, uh, you know, learn the motions, learn the basics and get that out of the way before you start getting into more advanced uh, you know mechanical devices and whatnot. So what I would do is I would either get a rope wrench and Just hook it up here Hook up the tether and Get it in a way that it's not gonna Be too flimsy there. Some people use the uh, The singing tree quickie the little shackle to attach their the rope wrench to their hitch climber pulley but i've actually found that instead of the rope wrench what works even better it's going to be one of these guys this uh chicane it's made by petzl is uh the superior version of the rope wrench i mean i've used it a few times and it works so much better it uh it collapses easier it grabs the rope it engages much quicker let me show you what it looks like basic setup here and you see that it's just automatically it, it's just so nice it just engages as soon as you're ready say you're going up and then you sit back down it just it's already there it's right with you it's not even right behind you it's it's right with you just a uh, a word of caution to all the you know climbers any climber um uh, every single climber should have one of these especially when you're using some kind of a device it really doesn't matter uh, you want to avoid cross-loading your carabiners so you're going to want something like a rhino carabiner by dmm or there's also some rock exotic a rock exotica rocco climbers uh, with the little wire trap in them those are also going to be very good it's very important because you don't want to accidentally like fall or something and then you're cross-loaded and bam you're gonna fall to your death or you know you're probably never gonna climb after that you know just want to avoid all that altogether right so anyway this setup right here is gonna be the best easiest cheapest way to climb srt in addition to the srt and the and the ddrt 
Uh, you're gonna want to have some more tools, especially when you're trimming, because you're not gonna have spikes, so you need a few aid tools. I'm gonna recommend you have a foot ascender and a hand ascender. So whether the hand ascender is double-handed or just single-handed, uh, it's up to you. The double ascender is gonna aid you in climbing so that's something to consider but it's also going to be very bulky when you rack it up to your harness so there's a few considerations there all right everyone so i have two recommendations uh and as far as uh hand ascenders and foot ascenders they're all going to range within just small different things this one kind of makes a big difference because it's a double cammed toothless ascender it's made by notch it's one of the more expensive foot ascenders that you're going to see out there on the market as well as this con pro cave hand ascender it's a lefty so the teeth on this one aren't so aggressive in addition to the ascenders you also want to have a few of these loop runners this is a dyneema one uh, you can get the nylon type you can get any kind of loop runner, just that you have loop runners. It's going to be within your best and highest interest. All right, guys, so here I have a few different um, different types of uh, base anchors. And the first simplest one is gonna cost you no money at all. This is a bowline on a bite here. That's gonna be the cheapest way to uh, achieve a base anchor. It's non-lowerable, so if you did get hurt in the tree and you were um you need rescuing uh this is not going to help anybody help you in the tree especially if it's not a climber say your groundy's not a climber they can't help you but if you do have a climber with you they can access the line this is a good option to have at least two ropes that's preferential but I would recommend every climber to have a, at least two ropes in the tree when you're up there. And moving on, so here is another anchor. This is just uh, some hitch cord here, and it's attached to the ART anchor. This thing is really nice. If you guys have the money in your budget, uh, you know, check it out. It's a good, good investment here. It works all over the place. It can double as just a second lanyard as you're going up the tree if you're spiking it and whatnot. So this is gonna help you out a lot. Uh, this is lowerable, so your groundies can lower you down in case of an emergency. Also provided that your rope is long enough. So that that's another caveat to this system. So yeah, guys, that, that's going to be your SRT setup. I'm going to post some, some prices up so that you guys can see exactly how much you're looking at spending for some of these setups. So real quick, guys, I'm going to talk to you guys about spikes. Uh, these are my spikes here. These have been my spikes for probably about seven, eight years. I upgraded the uh, leg straps or the foot straps to the Velcro. These Velcro things have been just uh, an amazing upgrade to my spikes. Uh, so whatever.